just came in, uh, you have just entered into the cave of emptiness. This is a 30-day intensive practice period. And uh, this is the first time we've, we've did this during the practice period. So people like yourself can take it home, take the fragrance home with you. Um, So far, maybe you've seen the root case on the uh, bulletin boards. And uh, I had something written down here. As you may be aware of, Zen lore is one of the most profound and subtle pieces of literature found anywhere in the world and the history of the world because it provokes the reader uh, past their intellectual and conceptual capacity to a very deeper, deeper level. And that deepness is found within ourselves. It's restored within ourselves. And so this was very compassionate of all the way from Buddha down to now, that these uh, teachings or truths were handed down to us. So this is the root case. And I began understanding why is it that Bodhidharma's is always usually the first case in the uh, Zen lore, the Len Zen stories. So I'll read this uh, slowly to you. This was written by Tendo uh, Wanchi. There are many Tendos. And um, Tendo means heavenly lad. And when I first looked up the words Tendo, I, I found out it was a heavenly child. So this is a story, but I think there's uh, some truth to it. Uh, the first Tendo started to build a monastery, and this heavenly child appeared. And he helped the teacher build and finish the temple and when it was finished, he disappeared. So that's Tendo. And you know, stories like that, uh, why was it written down? I mean, it's for us to remember these things that happen intrinsically, inherently, within your very environment. So here it is. And I, I uh, changed some of the words around. So this is a cross between uh, the Book of Serenity, the Soto Shu uh, translation, and a little, a few words of my own. And this this has something to do with Bodhidharma meeting Emperor Wu. Wide open and plain, nothing is sacred. The point of his coming is very different. Succeeding, he swings the axe without injuring the nose. Failing, he drops the pitcher without looking back. All alone, he sat frozen at Shaolin. Silent and still, he fully demonstrated Silent and still, he fully demonstrated 
the true meaning. The clear moon of autumn turns its frosty disk. The faint dipper in the river of stars dangles its evening handle. In an unbroken line, the robe and bowl were handed down to descendants. Thence have humans and devas produced medicines and sicknesses. The lion's roar is inexhaustible. So this was uh, Tendo Wanchi's verse of praise to the first holy truth, which was Bodhidharma, encounter with uh, Emperor Wu. In Bodhidharma, um, uh, his his uh, teacher was uh, Hanyatara, and he sent Bodhidharma to China. And it took Bodhidharma three years, probably from Ceylon, to reach China, southern China, Guangdong. And He's considered the first Zen ancestor. Why would this old man, I don't, I don't know how old he was, maybe old. Why, why would he make this uh, difficult, very difficult voyage to go to China? Coming back to some of the uh, unique uh, things about Bodhidharma was that he, he was the first one in China to point directly to the mind. Now, people during those days were just studying scriptures, but there was no, there may have been sitting, but he was the first one to point directly to the mind in China. And he said something like, it's a transmission outside the scriptures. Transmission. And this transmission is neither outside nor even inside. Then what is it? So just coming back to uh, a few of the sentences in that verse. Failing he drops the pitcher without looking back. I mentioned this uh, a few Saturdays ago. Okay, just in ordinary life, when you drop something, all this whole barrage of thinking goes on. Why did I drop it? Or someone's going to get mad at me? Or, But he dropped the pitcher and he doesn't turn back. So this is very interesting. It's about your thinking mind. When something happens, what do you do? I mean, if it really happened, you would turn around, clean it up, and walk away free. So then I was thinking also that he dropped Emperor Wu. <laughs> Emperor Wu shattered because he... he you know, the encounter he had with Emperor Wu, he dropped Emperor Wu and he didn't look back and he walked all the way. That's a long, I don't know how many, 1,500 miles for an old man, crossed the Yangtze River and went to Luoyang and stopped at Mount Song. And people in that area had lived in caves, so it was not new, but he was an Indian and he, he went up there. And there he sat for nine years. All alone. This word alone is uh, a very interesting word. The late Mayazumi Roshi would say, all one. Alone is not alone. Lonely, like we think it is. All alone, all one. Quite different. All alone, he sat frozen at Shaolin, 
means he went through lots of hardship, but he sat there like a rock. If he didn't do that, I wonder where we would be, or you know, what, what would the Zen school be if Bodhidharma didn't come there and do that? And you have to do that in China, sit nine years. China is a big country, many people, many thousands of people. Silent and still, he fully demonstrated the true meaning. The clear moon of autumn turns its frosty disk. And there's a, this refers to a poem by Fa Yen. And it says, everywhere I go, the frosty night's moon falls as it may into the valley ahead. The clear autumn moon turns its frosty disk. And it's from the takeoff from Fayan's poem, Everywhere I Go. The frosty night's moon falls as it may into the valleys ahead. It means bringing to light that everywhere I go, it is here. That sound familiar? Everywhere I go, it's here. Here, there, here, here. There is here. And this reminds me, uh, Shudu, or in Japanese, Secho Jukan Daosho. His poem, one, seven, three, five. The truth we look for cannot be grasped. As night advances, a bright moon illuminates the entire ocean. The dragon's jewels are found in each wave. Looking for the moon, it's here, in this wave, in the next. So this is not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but it's one, seven, three, five. Because we're looking for the truth somewhere else besides within ourselves. As night advances, as this self begins to dissolve, a bright moon, and the word bright in kanji is very beautiful, it's the sun and the moon. Bright. As night advances, a bright moon illuminates the whole ocean. Illuminates the entire universe. The dragon jewels are found in every wave. The dragon's jewel is found in the dragon's mouth. And you have to dive down into the ocean and open his mouth and get, and get, the, get the jewel. This is, this is how you get the jewel, but you have to dive very deep. There are people doing this. Looking for the moon. Uh, moon represents enlightenment. You can imagine the autumn moon, how big, big it is, especially here on Sonoma Mountain. And, you know, looking for the moon, <laughs> but it, it's in here, it's in this way, it's in the next. This uh, is the secrets 
of the Blue Cliff Wrecker, Thomas Cleary. This is a commentary by Secho, Zen Master, Hakuin, and Tenke, Zen Master. Three Zen Masters. And this is the verse uh, one of them composed, uh, I think Secho may have composed. The holy truth are empty. The holy truths are empty. How should one discern the point? Who is in my presence? After all, he says he doesn't know. Henceforth, he crossed the river in the dark. But how could he avoid thinking and making brambles grow? Even if everyone in the whole country pursued him, he wouldn't come back. Throughout the ages, he's remembered in vain. Giving up remembrance, what end is there to the pure wind circling the earth? The Statue's Comet. The poet looked around and said, Is there a Zen master here? Then he said to himself, There is. <laughs> Call him to wash my feet. This is beautiful, isn't it? Hakuen, the holy truths are empty. When asked about the highest meaning, he answered that it is empty. Without holiness, making a horrifying mixture of ghee and poison. Swallow it, and it will cure sickness. When asked about the highest meaning, he answered that it's empty. There's nothing there, nothing to rely on. When asked without holiness, not even holiness, not even empty, empty, making a horrifying mixture of ghee and poison. Swallow this and it will cure sickness. <laughs> we, <coughs> yeah. You know, we're tough. <laughs> you know? Courage. Determination, huh? Tenke, uh, Hakuen is uh, Rinzai and Tenke is Soto. Secho first takes the point of the question and the point of the answer to summarize the whole koan before poking into it. This is the standard form of recitals of ancient stories. Hakuen, how to discern the point. Even the Buddhas of the past, present and future, and even the Zen master over the ages cannot shoot the black star. How do you shoot the black star? Wonderful, huh? <laughs> it's almost like shooting yourself. 10K. The point of the holy truths are empty is something that everyone has to discern personally. How do you discern it? Hakuen, who's in my presence? Here is Secho, poison drum. Tenke, henceforth, 
he crossed the river in the dark. The word dark is extremely subtle and profound. It does not simply mean that in olden times, the Zen masters crossed the river because the emperor did not understand. Thank you. It agrees. <laughs> it agrees with us. It's also the same today. The moment you start thinking thus, and so already the Zen master has crossed the river in the dark. So far gone, you can't tell where he went. 10K. What can you do? Ever since he crossed the river, the saying's empty, no holiness, and don't know have become thorny brambles or gatherings of those who try to figure them out with their consciousness on feelings and objects. Hakuen. Even if everyone in the entire country pursued him, he wouldn't come back. He's pulled it off again today, just as Master Shi said, bringing this up. Here is Seicho's kindness, handling a dead snake so that it comes alive. Tenke, the under idea, the underlying idea is this, is the living Bodhidharma in everyone's self something that goes or comes back? Is the living Bodhidharma in everyone's self something that goes or comes back? Originally, it pervades the universe. There's no coming or going. Hakuin, throughout the ages, he remembered in vain. Just remembering is no use. Tenke, if Zenists pursue the meaning of Bodhidharma's coming from India, all the more this Bodhidharma won't come back. Tenke, be sure not to mull regretfully what does the master, what about the master where you are sitting, where you are standing? What about it? Hakon, what end is there to the pure wind circling the earth? That Bodhidharma is everywhere, visible in everything. 10K. Throughout all time, there has never been a change in that pure wind. Whether before or after Bodhidharma came from India to China, it is the natural beauty of simply being. Without the slightest warm breath of Buddhism or Zenism, the pure wind whistles. How refreshing. He says this so that learners will not get bogged down in the notion that there is nothing outside of everyday affairs. Penke is talking about the pure, this pure wind. And this pure wind existed before Bodhidharma as well as after Bodhidharma came from India to China. It is a natural beauty of simply being. Without the slightest warm breath of Buddhism or Zenism, the pure wind whistles. 
How refreshing. He says, this is so that learners will not get bogged down in the notion that there is nothing outside of everyday activities. It's found within everyday activities, the relative. Yet this one thing is uh, very interesting in the fact that it's found in the relative, in the particular. Um, there, there were some, uh, what is Buddha? And Tozan Zenji said, three pounds of flax. In the particular, or the uh, Joshu question about what is Buddha? And he says, the oak tree in the garden. Very particular. There are many stories like that. Many. So we shouldn't get bogged down in the notion that there is nothing outside of everyday affairs. Hakuen. Is there a Zen master here? Is Bodhidharma there? Have to clean house. Call him to wash my feet. You can't talk like this unless you have passed through the final transcendental impasse. This comes out of the same mold as Rinzai's treasure, a perception of truth buried with the blind donkey. Clever talkers who say that there's no need for Shakyamuni or Maitreya Buddha, if you've seen yourself, cannot approach this. The Blue Cliff Records came back to life by this one saying, call him to wash my feet. If you can see this saying in the palm of of your hand, you will meet the Blue Cliff Record. It's last commentary. 10K. Is Bodhidharma to wash Secho's feet? Or is Secho to wash Bodhidharma's feet? In any case, you cannot know this unless you look with your own true eye wide open. This is Secho's living wave on the river of Zen. His perception of the transcendental, transformational mechanism of the teaching of the source. Yeah, I hope this, uh, or this reading and comments uh, inspire you to, to really practice. There's, there's a lot. One thing about it is that there's so much, it's infinite. There's no resting point. It's, it's inexhaustible. There's no end. And in that way, it's true. If there was an end, then something's, it's someone's game plan. There's no end to it. There's no, no end to learning the Dharma. Okay, this is, uh, someone said, I got to upgrade. <laughs> a Shambhala, Shambhala student told me I got to, a senior, I got to upgrade. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Promotion, <laughs> upgrade is better. <laughs> yeah. This is my first time up here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the rain. Thank you.
This was written by Tendo uh, Wanchi. There are many Tendos. And um, Tendo means heavenly lad. And when I first looked up the words Tendo, I, I found out it was a heavenly child. So this is a story, but I think there's uh, some truth to it. Uh, the first Tendo started to build a monastery and this heavenly child appeared and he helped the teacher build and finish the temple and when it was finished he disappeared. So that's Tendo. And you know stories like that, uh, why was it written down? just came in, uh, you have just entered into the cave of emptiness. This is a 30-day intensive practice period. And uh, this is the first time we've, we've did this during the practice period. So people like yourself can take it home, take the fragrance home with you. Um, yeah. It's for us to remember these things that happen intrinsically, inherently, within your very environment. So here it is. And I, I uh, changed some of the words around. So this is a cross between uh, the Book of Serenity, the Soto Shu uh, translation, and a, little, a few words of my own. And this, this has something to do with Bodhidharma meeting Emperor Wu. Wide open and plain, nothing is sacred. The point of his coming is very different. Succeeding, he swings. And that deepness is found within ourselves. It's restored within ourselves. And so this was very compassionate of all the way from Buddha down to now, that these uh, teachings or truths were handed down to us. So this is the root case. And I began understanding why is it that Bodhidharma's is always usually the first case in the uh, Zen lore, the Len Zen stories. So I read this uh, slowly to you. So far, maybe you've seen the root case on the uh, bulletin boards. And uh, I had something written down here. As you may be aware of, Zen lore is one of the most profound and subtle pieces of literature found anywhere in the world, in the history of the world. Because it provokes the reader uh, past their intellectual and conceptual capacity to a very deeper, deeper level. <laughs> 